Here we have an awesome looking EG hatchback. It's powered by a D16A6 non-VTEC motor. We did the engine, we rebuilt it stock last year, and about around five months ago, the owner decided to turbocharge it, so it's all good. Here it is, look. It's on turbo, yeah. And of course, he, this is the owner's video as he was bleeding bleeding the coolant after using it turbocharged a few months the air bubbles on the coolant would not stop like you know it's, he would do this for a day or two and it's still consistently bubbling so he knew it's a slightly blown head gasket it's not overheating so this is for the paddock viewers this is gonna be awesome for you guys i will talk about the symptoms of it so let's go <laughs> Here is Nico's EG hatchback. It looks really good. He had it repainted like about four or five months ago and it looks really good. Made my red EG four door not look so good, right? But hey, look, the paint job is really, really well done. We restored or rebuilt a D16A6 because his plan was a street car with occasional track days and he decided afterwards, which is about five months ago, to turbocharge it. He got a cast manifold and a GT25 with 50 trim turbo. And actually he did the charge pipe work here because his business is about stainless works and, and stuff. So he had access to all the good stuff. And look at this. The charge pipe is laid out really, really good. Props to Nico for doing an awesome job here. Yes. All right. Looks really good. And of course, the engine or the car was not overheating. But after street tuning, he did say he noticed air bubbles, so he tried to bleed it out, you know? And let's start it. Let's show you guys. Let's see it started. There, you can see there's no unusual spewing out from the radiator, but as soon as it's idling, you can notice starting to spew some bubbles, right? That you can see there, some air bubbles. And so when he tried to bleed it out, it still had, you know, it still kept running bubbles. And here's his video. He took a video before deciding to bring it here. That's after bleeding it for an hour or two. So it's zero overheating but consistent air bubbles. And the reason why I mentioned this is because I know locally there's a group called Padek, and they would always, when they, when they notice this, they would always check on the thermostat or thermos switch, even the radiator fan or radiator cap. And the next thing you know, they already warped it up and it's already mixing oil and coolant. And this one is an early stage. Nico decided to get a Honda head gasket from HRC, an original one. And so here we decided to change it so it didn't prolong the damage because if you think about it if nico decided to bring this like two weeks later or after three weeks this would have warped more would have had more damage so let's disassemble it i have my colleague pulling out the head and let's check everything after it's not really extra work just because it's turbocharged like you know the charge pipe and the turbo is like a little bit more work but you know the the main work here is removing the accessories and here the head is off now let's look at it closer here okay no traces on the side of the block on the gasket leak as you can see it's all clean but here we'll show you how to check the warp on the block if you don't have a straight edge rule here we'll show you a good trick that you can do it's using a B16A rocker arm shaft here because this is straight. Run the thinnest filler gauge, like 0 0.0015. Run it through. If it's warped, it'll, you'll see you you get it through, right? But this one is not warped. So you see, you have to lift the the shaft just to get the filler gauge through. So that's definitely not warped. And here's another example. There, see, he had to lift the rocker the rocker shaft just to get the filler gauge in. So this is definitely not warped. That's, that's how you check it. If you don't have a straight edge rule, you can do this, it's pretty simple. And of course diagonally too, 
and you know on the block it's really warp like that it's always going to be on be in between boards like this this section these three sections would always pull down under if it's warped bad okay now let's go to the workbench let's look at the head gasket all the traces of the leak here's the head side as you can see on the outer edge of the bore it's it's spewing out so you can you can see the carbon traces this is on the intake side but it was not big enough to cause overheating or to mix oil and water but let's do, let me unclip the phone closer here you can see there's a carbon trace that's head gasket leak right there you can see that right on all four there see there's a carbon there so it's it's, it's squeezing out the compression that's why it's pressuring pressurizing the coolant and causing all those bubbles it's not pressurizing too much because the leak wasn't that big but the bubbles were there so here let me clip the phone back here on the block side there was no you know there was no leak so we know it's simply the gasket not the head not the black because it's not the head was not warped we checked it it's good so when you think about it, those guys locally that you know with experience mixing oil and water that means they've exceeded these symptoms the air bubbles they probably just kept checking about re either radiator fan or thermostat not thinking it's possibly the head gasket and so when they mix coolant with oil that means it's already catastrophic you know so why wait for that you know like do what nico did here when he knew the air bubbles was coming from the head gasket he decided to just bring it to us and have to change the head gasket. This way, no other damage. You can see the side of the block, there's no, not much leak. Actually, there's no, there's no combustion leak, but the, in, the head side, all four on the intake side has it. Yep. And now, we're actually going to make a video about head gasket, the original Honda, the fake Honda, uh, Federal Mogu, and all the other stuff, because... There's always a lot of misconception here in my country. So here, let me show you guys. Here's Nico's gasket on the left side. The old gasket, well, you know, just the remaining cardboard. Here, I have the fake head gasket here. The fake Honda. See that? And it's not always about the sticker because the sticker is easily, you know, they can easily copy it. The AGL head gasket and the Federal Mogul head gasket is still good enough, a lot better than the fake Honda. And people here would just say it's not good. Like, it's still good. You just have to be proper. Here, my colleague is like assembling it now. We're going to make a video of that head gasket comparison and checking in on what's important. And soon, we'll have it on the channel here. So for now, we're still working on it to complete it. Here, my colleague turned on the lights, getting a bit darker. It's almost there. Turbo is back on. Injectors. It has that FIC 550cc injector. GT2550 trim turbo. Oh, this is a really, really good setup. And, it's, and he says it's responsive. And we're going to test drive it later. So let's see what that. There you go. It's all done. We're going to bleed it bleed the coolant get it ready yes and as we bleed the coolant here let me start it there you go as we bleed it to get all the bubbles out like that we're also going to recharge the air conditioning with freon so it's, you know it's all good it's going to be a true true street car so as we do that as we bleed it we to recharge the Freon is going to be so good yep and then after that once it's ready we're going to go and test drive it let's double check it now here yep we're still charging the Freon it's going to be good and then once it's all warmed up here let's go for a test drive here we are on the way back Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Oh, that's so fun. It's so responsive. I love this car. This is a good, good street car. Yep. 
And then after we head back, we cool the engine down and then we retarget the head stud just to be sure everything is within spec and it's all good. So, yep. Now, by the time this video is out, Nico probably picked the car up. And the funny thing is, you know, he actually picked it up with his SIR. Yep. Runs all good now. Yes, perfect. Yep. This is really, really good. It's a fun street car to drive. Oh, it's perfect. It's about 10 PSI. He can go 12. That's still safe. Here, Nico decided to bring his SIR, which we have a part one of build series on this. You will link will be in the description. And automatically, I knew he brought that car, had his friend drive it. So on the way back, they probably have fun with this hatchback. He could have brought an STV, but he brought the SIR. So yep, next one, you can always, of course, click it here.